for new fish. Salt looks amazing today. What do you say we feed her? <laughs> Come on, Salty. Oh, Come on, Salt. No, 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 no. Slow down. Slow down. That's a good girl. Good girl, Salty. Up, 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 up. Whoa. Hey, that's my knee. Up here. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, stand up. She's getting a little bit close to me. All right. Salt, Salt, Salt. Whoa. Okay, Salt. You're amazing. I love you, girl. The other one's going to stay in. Okay. Yeah, the bane of my existence, the alligator enclosure. We've been trying to fix this leak for like a year and a half now, and we've done everything. We've tried to reseal it. We've done like total teardowns to the point where we've tried to fix everything, and we haven't been able to do it. But the good news is my friend Ed, the pond professor over at Aquascape, by the way, check him out. He's really cool. Link in the description. He's actually going to come out in a few weeks. Where the waterfall actually meets there, that lip right there, we have to rip the entire front rock off here. It's actually a connection that you screw together, where there's supposed to be like a gasket that basically goes down through the Back. Well, unfortunately, when Universal Rock made this, they didn't use that gasket. And because the polyurea is typically pretty sealed, they thought it would be okay. Well, unfortunately, you can just have a pinhole here or there in the foam for the polyurea, and then that's how it's leaking. So what we have to do is rip all of that off, put that gasket back on, and reinstall this in. So it's going to be pretty cool to get it done. Finally, in a few weeks, it looks like we we're going to be leak-free on this enclosure. It's been a minute since I showed you the new Caledonia room. It's looking good. Actually, Jessica's doing a bunch of makeup. Look at this. This is actually a Deadpool line gargoyle gecko. This sucker is nice. And it's not fired up, but it's still absolutely beautiful. Look at the red on that animal. And production has been pretty good in this room, actually. It's like a little egg factory down here. Look at all the eggs we pulled just in the last little bit, which, by the way, there's some lychees. Oh, and look, at we've now decorated the walls a little bit. It's really cool. Got a little nursery area here for a plant. But all these eggs are going to have an opportunity to hatch here pretty soon, including some more lychees, which is really cool. But you know one geckos that I really hope that we do produce here pretty soon are these ones right here. These are actually Europlates lidianus or the lined flat tail geckos. Look at how cool they are. We actually have a pair of them now. This is the little girl right here. I'm not sure where the male is. He's in here somewhere. But with any luck, this next year we'll hopefully be able to produce some lineatus because they are just absolutely incredible. All Europlates are really cool. As a matter of fact, speaking of that, we might be getting a new pair of Europlates, a new species we've never worked with, but uh, more on that later. But for now, let's head off to my favorite local pet shop. I always love to support the local independent pet shops whenever I can. And Keys Aquarium right down the street is an awesome place that's been around forever and I love going there. Hey, how's it going? What's going on, man? Yeah, I'm looking to get a couple fishes. Well, I know I definitely want to get a couple more anemones because clownfish actually like nest in them and kind of swim around them. The one we have is so cool. So we need a couple of anemones. But I want another fish. I wonder if I can get a tang fish. These guys get pretty big. As a matter of fact, here's a bigger one right over here. So this is definitely too big for my tank. There's no doubt. Maybe a yellow tang? I mean, can you fit a yellow tang in there? Wait, oh, this is another trigger fish shot, but I really, maybe I should get the Huma Huma Naka Naka Aba Aka Daka. Take a look at this. This is called a flame angel in the back there, and it obviously can live with clownfish. There's a little goby in there, too. Oh, gobies always seem to be in tanks, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge goby fan, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, he was pretty good with the Lakers, but this lionfish is crazy. Obviously, we can't have a lionfish in my tank. Definitely can't wait for the aquarium. Again, every time I come and see fish, all I think about is, you know, getting more fish for the aquarium. We're going to have a lionfish enclosure. That'll be super, super cool. Look at the little snowflake moray eel. It's hiding right now but gotta definitely have some moray eels again not good for my tank here's another lionfish look beautiful these fish are. these are a venomous fish so literally when you get stung by them Pretty it's bad i mean it paint a lot of nervous pain it's a neurotoxin puffer fish are you kidding me there's so many cool puffer gosh i want them all wait look at this it might be time to get some help yeah good to see you too i'm with jacob here jacob this is the thing no number one i want a couple anemones okay and then i've got you know two clownfish gotcha and i want to put some kind of cool fish in with them what do you think absolutely yeah what size tank is it it's actually this exact tank right here. All right. Yeah, I've got a couple good recommendations for you guys back there. So, so what, what can I put in? Something cool, colorful, awesome. Yeah. So I think one of the best recommendations I have would be one of these flame angels in here. We just talked about yeah, that. Yeah, that's cool. They're gorgeous, gorgeous fish. They are considered reef safe with caution, but I've never personally seen one that's going after corals. Gotcha. So I think they'd be a great option. You could do a little school of like the uh, the firefish gobies in here, those white guys. Right. Those guys are super cool. They're nice little community gobies. So this Midas plenty down there. You always go into a bigger tank down the line. We've got like the pygmy angel in here. Those guys they're super cool. They stay really nice and small. The Royal Gramas are another great nice one. Nice little like rock dwelling fish. They're cool. Okay. Just kind of see us swimming in and out of the rocks and see right. them perch up on rocks. Every anemone in here is one that the clownfish can host in. These so are really the best options. These are the for ones a tank to go. Like that. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
two of these anemones. Gotcha. Two recommendations for you would be something like that Sabay anemone right there, right. back there on the rock, or this one right up here, because they've got that really nice contrast with the white and like the bright blue tips. Right. Carpet anemone right here, because that one, it'll just get really nice yeah, and yeah, full. Yeah. I like these two. Let's grab these two Sweet. here. Let's do that. Then I gotta think about the fish. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll get started on catching these guys out for you. And while Jacob is getting the anemones ready for us, I've got to think about what fish that I want to do. I'll be honest with you, before I even talk to Jacob, I talked about that flame angel and how beautiful that is. And the fact that they obviously can live in with clowns because there's a bunch of little clowns in here. That may be the winner for sure. Gobies are kind of interesting and cool. And you know, it's one of those things where once I get them, I'd probably fall in love with them. I just don't think they're as cool. I don't know what it is about them. I think the flame angel is the winner. A little bit on the smaller side up here, there is a little bit of a bigger one down the bottom. They've both been doing great. They've both been eating like champs. Both been with clownfish in the past, so it's really up to personal preference. Know, let's get the bigger one. Absolutely. Go big and go home. So the winner is right there, the bigger flame angel. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's gonna add a little bit more color to the tank. I'm excited about this. Yeah, this guy. Right here. Take a look at this. It's a little baby shark in Let's there. Oh my gosh, it's a little baby shark. This is so freaking cool. I can't wait to get sharks. I mean, we're gonna have a couple different displays of sharks. These are bamboo shark or yes, banded, banded uh, bamboo shark. Yeah, banded bamboo. That black tip reef shark, bonnet head shark, bamboo sharks. You know, it's gonna be super cool. But Definitely gonna have some displays of eggs too. That way you backlight them and you can actually see the little babies moving around. This is super cool, man. All right, guys. Anything else that you guys wanna look at? Or? No, that's it. All right. Yeah, no problem at all. Okay. We got our anemones, we got our fish, let's get back to the shop. And I'm so excited to add these anemones and fish to the aquarium. It's going to be really cool to see them swimming around. And I wonder what Noah's going to think when he comes in and sees them. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm using a drip for this water to go into this water, right? So basically what it does, two things. It acclimates the temperature and it also puts a little bit of the bacteria from here into here just so that the acclimation with the anemones and the fish are good. We need to let this drip for 30 minutes. While we're waiting on that drip, we actually are checking on the colubrids here. These guys are about to go into brumation. Of course, this is a beautiful little albino Nelson's milk snake. We have a bunch of really cool colubrids that are going to be going down into brumation. And how do I brumate this room? This room actually drops down to 52 degrees and stays dark for three months. So we've had these animals off of food for about four so weeks. They clean the system out. Then we go through and revamp every single enclosure, bleaching it out, making sure that it's pristine because you gotta remember when these guys are brumating, their immune system is actually decreased. So we wanna make sure there's no bacteria as much as possible, right? And then what happens is this little monkey right here, this is actually just a fan with a baffle in it and it's hooked to a thermostat right up here, right? So I plug this in, I plug the thermostat in and this runs to outside. For those of you guys that don't know, Michigan gets pretty cold in the winter So we time. actually use the outdoor weather to get it cold in here. So it draws through here until this entire room drops down to 52 degrees. The thermostat shuts the fan off, shuts the baffle, and then no more air comes in until it gets to 55 degrees, then it turns back on. And this is how we thermoregulate this room down to 52 degrees. These guys, again, will be down for three months. We shut this off, we start raising the temperature, and it's about breeding season. About 10 more minutes. <laughs> Speaking of breeding, we still have a couple clutches left that are due to hatch. Weirdly enough, these guys are due to hatch on Christmas this year. I think we may be opening up some Christmas eggs uh, for Christmas, which is always a great present. But we are gonna start breeding all of the ball pythons here very soon in about two weeks. So here in the next day or two, I have to inventory every single male, every single female, write them all down, and then arduously decide what am I gonna try to produce. And that's an exciting thing where cousin, you start thinking like, oh, I could breed this to this. You get new animals up to size. You could get some new babies that are super exciting. So it's a really exciting time Year, but then after I get that done, we have to rearrange all the females into group, rearrange all the males into group, and then start to actually put them together. Within about two weeks, we hope to have the first males in with females, and then the breeding season begins. Crazy to think that we're still hatching eggs, and we're starting to breed again. What a wild cycle that is. Well, it's been a half hour. Now it's time to put them in here. It's going to be cool. And anemones take a little bit of time to settle in. So when you put them in, they kind of shrink up. Within a couple days, they start to blossom and look really cool. And this fire angel is going to look so good in here. Boom, boom. And it landed perfect, to be honest. It was kind of cool. Let's get this little monkey out here. There he is. Oh my gosh, 
gosh, he's so cool. Look at guys, you got friends. How freaking awesome is that, man? Oh my God, I love this tank. You know, it's just a little tank, but the thing that's crazy about things to think about doing this giant aquarium, this is just like a 29 gallon aquarium right here. We have close to 500 out for the fish in this aquarium alone. We're gonna be doing 20 plus thousand gallon aquarium. It's gonna be crazy to think just the amount of money some of these aquariums are. There's gonna be some aquariums that might have 30, $40,000 worth of fish just into one aquarium. And we're gonna have tons and tons of aquariums. As excited as I am about this, it's crazy to think what we are facing. Hey, it's gonna be awesome and I'm just gonna have to deal with it as it comes. I tell you, fish are so peaceful. When should we open up the aquarium? I don't think I'm ever gonna leave. Speaking of leaving, Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, I'm not a huge Gobi fan, to be honest with you. He was pretty good with the Lakers, but...